Well, hello there. This is Madeline from Madeline's Craft Room, and it's Thursday night, which means it's Stamping Live. So I hope that you're all able to join me, that um, you can see what we're going to do tonight. We're actually going to play with some dies, and uh, not just one in in particular, but I'm going to show you with this particular one, which is the crafting with you. And these are the dies that come with this amazing little bundle. I absolutely love it. And uh, yes, so if you're joining me, be sure to comment so I know that you're there. It's always so good to see you all. And oh, it's Yvonne. Hello, Yvonne. Yes, so be sure to comment because then you can be entered in the draw. And even if you're catching the replay, please uh, feel free to comment as well because I can enter you in the draw as well. So, yes, I am Madeline from Madeline's Craft Room from Parksville, BC. It's Jacqueline. Hello there. So glad you could join me. Well, we are going to learn a technique of using our dies to make a background for our cards. And I'm sure we all have some dies. So just look at your different stamp sets and your bundles and see if you can find one that works for you, as I'm sure you can. It's actually very easy to um, do. It does mean a little bit more... Um, cranking with the stamp and emboss machine to do multiple dies. But I just want to give you some ideas of a few that I have done. And what started this idea, this particular card uh, was, of course, it's a retired card. Hello, Linda. Good thing that you could join us. Oh, and there's Jenny. She can see me this time. Good, Jenny. And I always keep a uh, template file for fun folds, but I also do one for techniques. And what's unique about this one is I'm going to bring this in a little closer. Can you see the uh, paddle that was with this particular bundle? I have used that by cutting. Oh, there's Wendy. Hello, Wendy. I did die cut that multiple times to make that little textured piece on the back of this card. Now, I didn't put it anywhere else on the card, but it adds a nice little textured piece here with the detail. I also had uh, another one that's in my file, and it's a retired, just retired product as well, and that's our sunflower. And that's what I did here too, is uh, it's a bigger image. So I'm just trying to give you some ideas of little dies, or even in this one, it's a bigger die. So you can see, and there's Vicky. Hello, Vicky. I hope this gives you some ideas when you look at your dies at home to see. I'm, and I'm positive you must have lots that could apply uh, this technique to. So I'm going to show you one more at the end, and it's using a new product. But first, let's get going on this particular one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use the same color for uh, the card base, which I'm using polished pink. And then I'm using um, the same polished pink to cover the front. Whoops, i got to get in screen. And <clears throat> so we want it to cover the entire front. I didn't want to leave a border on this one because you want as much space as possible. You like that sunflower. I know that's one of my favorites. It looks so dainty, doesn't it? <clears throat> so what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to take this polished pink and, of course, these scissors. And I'm just going to show you. I had one. This is the die in the crafting uh, with you bundle and as you can you can see here it actually is one die and it cuts out both pieces so when you get your die you're going to have two pieces like this so of course the first step is <clears throat> to glue them together most dies you don't have to do that but of course i decided to do this particular one because I'm starting my display for the new annual catalog and of course I want to have some ideas up there with the different bundles so I am 
making this card as one of the cards that could go on there. So there we have our scissors. How easy is that? So what we're going to do here is we're just going to randomly put the dies um, in different places. And I'm not going to worry about uh, the inside because I am going to um, use, which one is it here? Oops, it's covered. I am going to use our uh, template here in the middle to do some craft or stamping. So what we want to do, let's hope we're going to have enough here. Oh yes, we definitely will have enough. I don't want them going all one way. I want to them just kind of be a little bit off the page, a little bit on the page, a little bit of everything. Let's see. I think we're going to oh, got to go the other way. And then this one maybe will go here. Oh, look at that. I did just the right number. So <clears throat> now this is the part that can take a little bit more time is now you're going to put some glue. So of course, I'm mainly focusing on the blades in this situation. So again, just depending on which one. Now I just realized I did not. Okay, I'm going to put this down and then I'm going to I forgot to put my silicone mat under here. First thing, because we're going to have glue then everywhere. Oh boy. Let's see if we can do this. Here we go. So the silicone mat just means that you're not going to leave your, your table all gluey. So this way, yeah, so we want to focus this time on the handles. So the other thing that you can do if you are finding that you're leaving more blobs than not <laughs> is you can use an extra silicone mat <clears throat> and you can dab it off. Oops, we've got to go down here in the screen. And then that way you're not going to have too many um, blobs on your paper because it does make a difference it leaves it maybe not too sticky, but you can see a little bit of that dried up glue. So it definitely looks nicer if you don't have as much glue on. So I guess the other thing, I never thought of that. We could have used our adhesive um, paper, which makes it like a sticker. So that would have been another smart idea that you could do at home. So I'm just going to put that there. So I'm not worrying about them sticking out over the edge because we are going to cut that off. So which way did I have it? I think I had this one this way. Yeah. So mainly focus on the handles. Again, I'm going to just dab it off. Okay. And let's see. Actually, I could have gone the other way. It's okay. Uh, any mini. <laughs> it's sometimes hard to decide. Which way to go? See, I could have dabbed that one even a little more. Okay, so this one I just want to hold here. Sorry, this takes a little bit of time, but just want to give you some good ideas as to <clears throat> what to do with this technique. Now, I love this new bundle because it features all kinds of crafting. It's not just for uh, card making. It's like with what you would use the scissors for, but it has a sewing machine and it has uh, knitting um, balls of wool. It has, or crocheting, I guess. And then of course it has, um, let me show you here, the sewing machine with threads and you have the easel and here you can put some nice messages, if not the sentiments in there and all buttons. Oh my goodness, it just has, every kind of craft you can imagine. So I am going to love this one. Whoops, don't stick to my finger. Okay, so now here we go again. I'm going to dab this on here. Now don't worry if you miss a spot because I'll show you what we can do at the end. You like this set? Yes, me too, Yvonne. It is really cute. We had one a few years ago with some really nice crafting paper. And I really did enjoy that one too. But I love the stamps and especially the dies that come with this one. I personally have not seen one 
with Stampin' Up! So I'm excited about this one. So this was one of the first ones on my list. I want this one. So of course you could use, uh, what else could you use in this one? I mean, pretty much for this particular one, this stamp set, probably most of the other dies wouldn't work unless you wanted the basket, but otherwise the rest of the dies, uh, oopsie, cut out a stamp, one of the stamped images. Oh boy, see, I did I forget to blot that on the silicone mat? Yes, I did. See the difference? You get a lot more glue and I'm gonna have to work harder in getting that off. So, too busy talking, not paying attention. So let's make sure we get that off there. Okay, now I think I'm going to go this way this time. Are right, we got them? Yeah. So now you're going to see there are some spots, but that's okay because the first thing we're going to do now, <laughs> it does sound good, doesn't it, Linda? So, because that's what it's all about here is we love our crafting. And I love when we have our VIP group and everybody shares the different things. It's not necessarily just paper crafting. It's all kinds. Carol with her beading and whether we're gardening or knitting or crocheting, all kinds of beautiful crafts that we can do and hobbies that we enjoy. Okay, so I'm actually going to take this silicone mat now and move that over there and you know a silicone mat cleans off really easy because if you get some glue on it when it's dry you're just going to rub it off and then there it's gone so now we have the basic now you can see where i've missed a few spots so yes this is where then you want to just lift it up a smidge and put a little bit oh what happened here my computer's fading. What on earth is going on? Okay, so again, I should blob that off because I don't want too much. Do I see another one? Not too bad. Not too bad. All right, so now we have basically now the background. And in a minute, well, we could glue it on the front, but I'm not going to glue that yet. So the next thing I want to do is take our cut and emboss machine. Isn't that ever cute? It's the actual cut and emboss machine. <laughs> and what we're going to do here is we're going to put that on a block. And I'm going to bring in, I think we're going to do all the same color for this one. Oh, you know what I just realized? I do not have it focused on the big one. Sorry, ladies. Oh my goodness, I thought I had that all set up. There, hopefully you can see a little better. Okay, so now we're gonna take this stamp. Yes, the quilting friends, absolutely. And I've seen some really nice cards already, um, Yvonne, where they've kind of made a quilt in the background and then had uh, all kinds of beautiful paper and things too, so. Look at that. That works good. Sometimes if you have a new um, ink pad and it's really mushy, you might want to take a spoon and flatten it a little bit because I find these distinctive stamps, if you have a really mushy stamp, then it will be really mushy and you don't want mushy for this. So this just adds a little bit of um, texture by the different colors in the different spots that are shaded. And so there we have the lovely image. And now we're going to talk about a cut and emboss machine. Come in here, little mini. It's gonna be really, really big. Sorry, I got my stand a little low. Let's see, we won't be doing this very long. Oh, I guess it would help to have the die. Yes, yes, yes. And then, don't let me forget to show you something else that's really cool about this bundle. So for now, we're going to center that on there. Boy, my hands are jiggly today. I should be using my 
washi tape. All right, let's see if we can get this on there straight. I think we'll be fine. As long as you um, stagger your plates, it usually works really well with the mini. So let's see if you can see it coming out here. There it is. All right. So there is our adorable cut and emboss machine stamped and die cut. Now I was going to show you, I forgot when I showed you all these amazing dies that we have. I'm going to put this one back here. On the flip side, I put this, which is an embroidery hoop. And this is an actual Stampin' Up! trimmer. <laughs> and it, it really can hold your paper in it. So you're going to be seeing, just be watching, because I'm going to be having lots of new things out. And you'll see how that looks and works. All right. So now we're going to bring in, and I should say this is from the other new product, which is our Countryside Corners. And I love how this is all one stamp and you can stamp it. And then also you have all these layered uh, te templates, the dies. So I am enjoying using that. So now what I was going to do is going to take a little bit of our bright and beautiful paper. And you can see now this is bubble bath, but you know what? It's I think it's going to work OK with this color. I chose bright pink, of course. <laughs> of course, Madeline would choose that. All right. So I just want a little strip. So I'm going to try three quarter inch here first. Let's hope that's going to be the right size. Oh, we also got the polka dots, but I don't want to be too, too busy. So come back down here. So I'm thinking if we put this here, just to add some color for it going back and forth. Now, I was going to stamp. Here's my question for you. Do you think I should stamp it in the polished pink or should I stamp it in Starry Sky? Which one do you think we should do a sentiment? And I've lost my, oh, here it is. Let me know what you think, ladies. I'm hoping this fits in there. Ooh, if I move it down, it will just fit. I love this sentiment. Life is better when you're crafting. Yep. Uh, pink. Okay, going to keep it all um, consistent, aren't we? That's what I was thinking of. It's all going to be pink. Everybody okay with that? Okay, here we go. This is going to be a pink crafting card. And I always like to kind of just stamp it on my paper just to make, oh, look at how nice that is stamping. Nice, nice. So I am just going to layer this so I can see. Well, I have room and then I line it up on my grid paper. That should be fine. And I'm going to go up and to the to the right as much as possible. Look at that. Perfect. All right. So the next plan, and I just kind of make sure that's going to look okay with that pink. You think that pink's going to work? That's almost too pink. You know what? I think I... <clears throat> I'm going to make it go a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go here. Let's try this. Is this going to be better? What do you guys think? A lighter one? If I can turn it around. It's got a bit of a stripe of both. What do you think? Or should I go even more pink? Tell me what you think. You like that? Um, maybe, I don't know, let's, let's try it here. That's almost white. No, I don't want that white. We oh, can't even see what I'm doing here. Oops. Let me just cut one more and then we can have a choice. Okay. 
So what do you think? Should we go the darker or the lighter? So here's going really light. Or this color. One, two, or three. You like that? Of course, then it will just... I'm kind of thinking the lighter. You like the lighter? Let's have a look. If we put this on here, like that, and then put this on. I think that should be okay. Three. Somebody said three. You like the darker? Oh, yeah, that will be fine, won't it? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to glue uh, these things onto the, um, what's well, not really a hexagon. What is that? A hexagon rectangle? I don't know what they call that. So basically, we're going to put this on here. And then there is a little bit, if I can find my scissors now. I lost my scissors again. Oh boy. Oh no, under the paper. Okay. So we're just going to cut that off. Okay. And now we're going to glue our cut and emboss. I am going to pop up this whole shape. So I don't want to have too much height, but we're just going to put that on there like that. Okay, and now if I can find where my dimensionals are right here, we're going to put them on here. So yes, at the end of the month, I am going to do a catalog launch and I would do it sooner, but I have been so busy getting ready for the markets that I still have not finished my cards for you to see. So we can't have that. Oops, we've got a piece stuck there. So just be patient with me. I'm getting and my team and some club members are going to come and help me. And we'll have some beautiful cards to show you very, very soon. All right. So now we're going to take this. And we're going to center that onto there like that. And now we're going to turn this over. And now we're going to adhere this to the base of our card. Okay. So now we don't want to leave a border. We're going to go all the way on the front. Okay. So we're almost done. I have one more thing. We could put this bright pink as embellishments, or we could put this, actually, you know what, as I'm saying it, that's almost like that color, isn't it? This uh, bubble bath pink. Or do you think we should go bright? Tell me what you think. This pink here, or this bright pink? And while you're doing that, I'm also going to tie a bow with a ribbon, and we're going to see if we want the ribbon. All right. I know there's a little time it takes for me to see your comment, but as I tie this bow, we'll see if we're going to want this ribbon and what color embellishment. Any ideas? Muted pink? Yeah, I agree. It's actually almost the perfect color, isn't it? Okay, so we are going to take our putty end and we are going to put some of these on here. Let's see, we'll put one down here and one, let's see, over here, here. I don't want it in a row, so let's go over here. Okay, so now we have embellishment. This isn't the same color, so I'm not so sure. What do you think? Should we put a sparkly uh, ribbon on? Who wants the ribbon? You think the ribbon, the bow makes a difference? Let's have a look. Yes. Doesn't that look cool with the scissors? And you know, the more detail you have in the dies, then it will really show too, as you can see here with the scissors. No ribbon? So just like that, 
Yeah, I think it focuses. Oh, somebody yes. So just giving you ideas, you could do that or you could leave it off. But there is one beautiful card that you can make and it's just using your dies uh, for the background. Now, I did promise one more card that I have already made. And this time I used the Beauty of the Deep. And with this, I took the anchor. Oh, it keeps going dark on me. And we see it now. So you can see I cut out the dies for the anchor. And then I made this under the water scene with the fish and the coral and all the seaweed. Isn't that cool? So you can see this die doesn't have as much detail. And so it kind of just depends what you want to go for or what dies you have. But you can see that these two do have quite a different look. Um, and it just depends on what you have. You like that? And then, of course, we also had the beautiful sunflower and even white on white. You know, it's very showy, but you can see in each one of these, I've used the same color. And that's what just gives it um, a nice textured look without going wild in your colors. So there we go, ladies. I hope that gives you some new inspiration and ideas to use your dyes. And I would love to see more of what you do. So be sure to share with me and uh, leave a comment and... Uh, be sure to check out madelinescraftroom.net uh, so that you can see what all events are happening. I'm in a big uh, market in uh, the Arbutus Meadows Farm. They're doing a spring market. So I've been busy getting ready. But yes, I'll have lots of cards there. Come by and say hello. Bye for now. Thanks, ladies. Bye-bye.